Okay, I am Farouk Elbaz. I was born in Egypt in a town called Zagazik. And uh, I was educated also in Egypt with a, with a uh, BS in uh, chemistry and geology. So I started looking at all kinds of things. And here is an ad for uh, NASA that was wanted some geologists to work on the geology of the moon. And they applied and they got accepted. <laughs> How did you persuade them to accept you? When I first was accepted to be talking something to the astronauts was with, with the Ken Mattingly, one of the astronauts. And he was assigned already to yeah, put Apollo 13 later, after, after Apollo 11 and 12, so he was to be at 13, but he was back up on 11. And then he told me, okay, I will give you one hour to prove that what you say is of some value to any of us. I said, okay. <laughs> So I went before he said, I, I, I ran in the, I, I mean, I will be in the, the Cape, it's in front, Cape Canary, and I will do my running for one hour between five and six. And they take a shower, and then between six and seven is the time I'm give you. Because seven, I'm going to go for dinner. Okay, here it is. <laughs> so I went two hours beforehand. And they went to the place where he told me to be, and they put all of the lunar pictures on the on the walls of the whole room, big sheets, sheets, 24 inch prints of the thing to show exactly where the, what we think the first three orbits of the spacecraft are going to be in, in different colors: red, green, and yellow. So the fir first first orbit, second, and third. And here it is, the, 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 the three orbits where they will ask him from Houston to look at certain landmarks and to see whether whether he can see through the telescope any of them. They give him seven and they want at least three. It would be great if I can get five. So I thought, okay, let's teach him where these seven might be, what it is. And they put the seven and they said, now tell me, I didn't say a thing about it. I told them. Tell me, what do you see here from I said, well, before we get there, there's uh, two craters locked up by themselves. So like a doublet. I said, you're great. And I write a doublet in black ink on this feature. Because that's what he said, which means that's what he would remember. It is a doublet. And then right before he gets to that one little thing, and that is the landmark. And then he would go to the next one and said, look at that pattern of, uh, of craters that make the head of this one. That looks like a snowman. I say, great, I write snowman. And that, as far as I'm concerned, that becomes the name. Never, never mind what the real names are, that becomes snowman. That's it. I, it's it's, it's sequence. And whatever it is in that, and back and forth for for, for me for like 50 minutes, going over one by one, all the, the, the seven features, the seven landmarks, one by one for him to remember. And this, I told them that this is what my orbital, orbital training is. So at the end, he said, uh, I, I sat down with him and he said, close your eyes, stay away from the other, from the pictures, and tell me, with first orbit, you're going to go over landmark one. What is that landmark one? So said, what? I said, what did you say about landmark one? He said, I said uh, one was that, uh, what we called it, a uh, doublet? I said, yes. I said, oh, okay, so the landmark will be after that, 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 and that little corner will be the tiny little finger, which I would mark. I said, good, one to second. Ah, that's it. Anyway, he, he, I made him repeat exactly what he wanted to do this and that. And so he thought that was really something great because it would make him figure out where these landmarks, as many of these landmarks as possible, which means that it would make the, him make the, the or, uh, assign exactly where the orbit of the spacecraft is, which would make him a better pilot than anybody else. So he, he loved that plan. And he said he was delighted with it. As soon as I finished in the plan, I was good, leaving. He said, uh, we're going to have dinner. Why don't you stay with us for dinner? So I stayed. <laughs> then became kind of friendly. And before I left, uh, the next time he called me, hey, uh, uh, Farouk, well, well, when can you come back? at the end of it, which means that that's it. That is, that what I'm going to 
give him, he will see, he will make him a better pilot or a better astronaut or a better lunar visitor. And therefore, I am of value to him. And then I became a friend. And then from there on, one by one, I just moved on one by one, with telling them exactly what we need and all of the places that we need to take pictures of and why. And they absorbed it all because they felt that they are doing something super fantastic from their own point of view to become better pilots because they are better astronauts and therefore they really became very enthralled with and delighted with all of the what I call orbital training meaning I will train you to see things while you are in lunar orbit even before anybody lands so we will see a great deal of the moon with all of the things that you can see from the window of the system. What do you remember about Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins? Yes, indeed. And they, uh, of course, they were the first, and they did not appreciate, for good reason, the scientific training as much, because they said there is enough of, enough of all the kinds of other things that we, and we don't know what in the hell is going to happen during the mission. And so that never mind the science, and never mind the, they'll just tell us where it is. And my friends would tell me, Farouk, why don't you just mark it on a, mark what you need and on, a, on, a, on a map and they'll give you every goddamn picture you ask for. And just don't, don't tell me what it is, just to, tell me where am I, am I going to point the camera and they'll get you all that, that you need, you know. So it's, the, from the outset, they knew that they're going to have limited time. They are the first to try and they're not going to have that much time to think about it or to, to, uh, to pontificate and therefore maybe not. Although they actually sat down and listened to us. So they learned a great deal. And because we knew that, we never knew that whether this is going to be the, the first mission or the last mission. Because if the astronauts die, maybe the whole program will be defunct or be stopped. So we didn't really know. And so we, we, did, we, as, we as assigned them to all kinds of things that they, they would do, so that, hoping that they will do whatever it is that will, that, that, will, that will be all that we know about the moon from them. So Michael Collins, when I told him a lot, the, the pictures of the and I gave him a, 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 picture, a map and targets assigned to them north of that from the, uh, window number one north of, the, north of the spacecraft you can pick this and south of the spacecraft to look at this and this and that and he said just tell me where, where the picture, what, what pictures you want and they'll get you all the goddamn pictures you want just <laughs> put them on the map let me know which one and, and he himself while on the lunar orbit beginning, he thought my god all of this training was great because I now know where in the hell am I pointing that camera and what for? So he himself became enthusiastic about that, actually. And whatever we get from there, from Apollo 11, will help us in all of the following Apollo missions. So it is damned important for them to do. And that became very clear also that the astronauts really figured out exactly what, what is the importance of their observations. And Neil Armstrong did something that, for we, that we were forever appreciative of what he did. After he finished the job, and they were all going to the, to the to back home to the spacecraft because they were going to lift over in, in one hour. And uh, Buzz Aldrin had already come in and they landed and moved, moved into the spacecraft. And Michael, uh, my, uh, uh, Neil Armstrong had a camera and was going towards the, 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 the spacecraft to go up. But he noticed a, car a crater that was very clear to what we talked about it for many, many hours with him, about the fact that we need not a very large crater, a crater that will be only an iron with 10 feet in diameter. And because if we get something, we need to know the thickness of the lunar soil which we call regolith. The, the regolith was the soil on the moon, so we wanted to know the thickness of that before we hit solid rock. And he said, and why, how you figure that out? He said, well, if we go to a crater that's the size of such and such, then we would see that the bottom of the crater is solid rock, 
and then so we know what the thickness of the soil of the moon because we know that the thickness of the soil is what at least one maybe three maybe even five six meters because of the bombardment by that so he instead of going to the spacecraft and coming up he headed towards that camera very far from where it ran to it because of the time ran to it stood at the edge of it took the picture turned around and ran back to look down to his he knew that that would tell him the thickness of the lunar soil and it didn't tell us the thickness of the lunar soil that three meters <laughs> were there any sites that apollo didn't visit the uh, the one that we were all said that we could not get to is a sample of the southern highlands of the moon. The whole block of the south part of the moon, as if it is a huge Africa kind of, in the southern part of the moon, but it is much larger, like five times bigger than, covering the five times the area of Africa, as if you think about it on the moon. So the southern highlands were a very large a place that is very different from the places of the sample. And we wanted the sample from that place because it's what we thought that compositionally would be different. Actually, it turned out to be a bit different, not as much as we thought it might be, but it was, it was different. So that's the only place where we could have gone, but we did not because it's rough and it is too far to the south and all kinds of, of other uh, we did not have radar data about it to, ass to assure safe approach to it. So there were no kinds of reason that we could not get there, but that's the only place that we think geologically would have gotten us something different from all the places we did get, we did get to.